Hi, today we'll be looking at Xbox 360, one of my favorite, uh, all-time favorite systems, which is still good to this day. There's so many good games for this system that you can spend a lifetime playing them and uh, you will never get bored. Um, but first things first, this is obviously a slim one and this is um, Trinity as far as I can see, but we'll open it up and see later. Uh, it's in really good condition, I would say. It works, I've checked it. The one thing that is kind of worrying is this. It has been opened. Somebody has uh, damaged it here, the case. Fortunately, it's just the back. Well, I hope so. Yeah, it seems seems like it's just this here. So, first things first. If you ever open Xbox 360, please don't do that. Don't do that. There's so many videos on, the, on YouTube how to open this. Uh, just have a look first and then open it. There's essentially the, the, the major problem people have is the tabs or taking out this. So you can take this out, this grill, whatever it is, and then to, to get out, take out these um, side panels, there's just tabs, three tabs on each side, three or four tabs on each side. Just release them and it will just come off very easily. So yeah, don't, don't do this. Applying force to um, devices is usually a bad idea. So, uh, what we'll do today, we'll do um, reset glitch hack, we'll mod it. We'll um, do RGH3, which is normally uh, with the reset glitch hack, you would need one of these. This is just a glitch chip. Uh, there's many variants of it, some are better, some are worse. Some are better for certain type of console, uh, some are worse again. Uh, so, normally you would need one of these, again, uh, one of these. RGH3 is a very clever way of glitching the device, where you don't use external glitch chip, you use Southbridge. So, very clever people um, uh, made, a, uh, made a hack, or made, a, uh, made it possible to glitch the console from its own um, Southbridge. So, what they, what, what, RGH3 does is essentially programs the um, south bridge instead of external chip and that south bridge will then um, glitch the system. Uh, also, as uh, RGH 1.2 I believe, it uses PLL, which PLL line, uh, which makes the boot really, really fast. So that's what we'll be doing today. And to do that, you obviously need to, need to take this, this whole thing apart. And you need one of these, this is the programmer. So, exactly as with previous um, methods, RGH, you will need a uh, um, um, programmer. I think Xflasher 360 is still the best. Well, it works really well for me. You can uh, create your own flasher or, or, or programmer. You can use uh, Raspberry Pi Pico, I think it's called Pico Flasher. So, you can do that as well. If you, well, these, these are quite expensive or were quite expensive. I'm not sure what the cost is right now, but uh, Raspberry Pi Pico is really cheap, so you can buy and, and do that. There's many tutorials. I'll, I'll probably um, link something in the, in the description. And you'll need one of these. This is just the cable that we'll use, we we'll solder this um, to the motherboard to uh, read the NAND and then write the NAND and, and do all that nice stuff. Um, this, I think I did this myself. Uh, I think normally it comes with just kind of raw, naked um, wires. So I just soldered this, these pins here uh, so that it's kind of easier uh, and it's reusable, essentially. It's very easy to do, but anyway, that, that's pretty much all you need. Um, obviously, soldering iron and uh, yeah, microscope is the best and I'll obviously use microscope, but it can be done without microscope. So if you don't have microscope, don't worry. Um, so yeah, let me take this whole thing apart and uh, I'll show you the motherboard. I'll show you where exactly are the points. I'll show you how to how to solder this and the whole whole procedure. So I'll take this apart and I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, so the Xbox has been taken apart. Um, I'm not sure why, um, I think somebody has changed the thermal paste. Um, there was definitely not enough thermal paste. This is essentially empty space. And this, uh, if this was the factory, it would have been dry. This is kind of wettish. So I think that's why they opened the console. And as I suspected, one of the tabs um, on the back panels was broken. 
so yeah um, but yeah it, it kind of holds it in place there's um, another one just very close to it so it holds the the, um, the case really nicely so let me show you just the general overview of the areas where we'll be working um, with and uh, we'll go under the microscope and we'll do the soldering so we'll start um, actually we'll start from the other side because that's where the um, that's where the two wires will go that connect this PLL and the post with the SMC and that then goes to Southbridge. So first of all um, the um, post. The post point is right here. If you look, um, I, I get that you don't see this, but if you position your motherboard so that you see Microsoft here, the PLL Sorry, not the PLL, the post. Post point is right here. You see this very distinct pattern here? And it's right here. So it's the second um, um, point on the outside. And again, you'll see this clearly under the microscope. So this is the uh, post. And that needs to be connected to SMC post, which is, mm, where is it? Right here. Um, in this area. So it's um, right above R3, R22, this point here. Again, just a general idea where it is so that you can see, you can, you can kind of see where to look it, look for. So this right here. Then PLL, which is probably the trickiest part of this mode. Uh, the um, PLL point is right here. You can't see it, it's just a via. So in this, this area here, it's a C5 R 35. So we'll, you'll need to kind of uh, remove the top layer, the mask, and then you'll, you'll see the point again, you'll see it clearly under the microscope. Um, you probably can, can do this if your eyesight is really good without microscope, but microscope, or at least magnifying glass, it will be helpful. And then you need to connect this point uh, with the SMC PLL, which is right here, just um, next to Microsoft um, logo or text right here. So that's what we'll, we'll start with. And again, we'll, we'll um, look at that under the microscope so you can see clearly what I'm doing. Um, by the way, I forgot to mention that you'll need um, for, for this board, for Trinity board, you will need a resistor um, 3K to up to 10K. So anything in between will work. I think I have 3.9K somewhere. So uh, you can solder, like, don't solder the resistor, obviously, to the PLL point here, because it's very fragile, and you'll, you'll definitely destroy it. Uh, you can solder SM, um, SMD small um, resistor to this point, and then wire. But again, these points are fragile. I, I'm kind of old school. I will use just a through hole, stuck it in, in the middle between the two wires, so the wire will go from here to here, and in between will be, uh, there will be... Um, resistor there. So that's what I'll, what I'll do. So apart from the programmer, you also need the, the, that resistor. And then we if we flip to the other side, um, you'll see these areas here, these two areas. This is where we'll be soldering these wires and then connecting to, to the programmer. So that's, that's pretty much it. Again, easier to start with this side because once you solder these wires here, it won't be easy to flip the board and you know work on the other side of the board. So we'll start from, from the other side. So I'll take it under the microscope and we'll start soldering. Okay, so we'll start with post. So again, this is the this is the point that we'll be using. Again, this is that, that distinct kind of area, uh, just uh, very close to that hole where the heatsink goes. So we'll start with this point. So again, second from from this arrow kind of shape uh, outside taking a look from from this hole this point here so I'll add some flux I'll add some fresh solder and we'll prep the the pad essentially and by the way I'm using let me grab a tweezers so I'm using this kind of wire very thin wire uh, to do that just come in with a little, of, little bit of fresh solder here. Just 
just to make it nice and shiny. That's enough. Uh, by the way, I need my film extractor. There. Okay, so let's solder that, that wire to this point. Now, this is fairly easy, just make sure you don't short the wire. As you can see here, there's potential for shorting. So what I'll do, I'll hold it in place and I'll just tap it. Because this uh, outer jacket will melt most likely. So we need to be careful. And that's done. So this point is done. Now we'll need to go to and by the way, I'll clean this. Actually, I'll clean this now. Because why not? So I'll just hold this in place. Let's use some isopropyl alcohol or whatever you have uh, that will actually clean the, the um, flux. should be good. Now, uh, one thing, one important thing, just stay clear of this hole, because obviously um, there will be a screw or metal kind of thingy, so what I'll do, I'll just kind of bend it a little bit, just like that. So as you can see, still not touching anything else, just this point here and we'll go to the area let me see yeah, it won't be easy to find under the microscope but we'll get there I think where are we? <laughs> so it should be here let me see yeah very close there this is the point R3, R22, let me focus a little bit better, so again, this point right here, right above, um, right between the, above R and 2 here, this point, so, same thing, we'll prep the pad, flux always helps, a little bit of flash solder, Okay, and we'll come in with the wire. Add some flux, fresh flux. So I'm not very happy with how it looks, so... Just a touch. And there you go, nice and shiny. So, we'll clean this off again. And we are done with post wires. That was the easy part. Um, now, PLL, let me clean this a little bit better, maybe. So, we are done here. Now, the tricky part, PLL. Uh, PLL is right here. So, this is the point, right here, C5, R35, right between R and 3. And this is just a via, and we need to be very careful. There's a, a line here, track here. Obviously, if we break it, we'll, that won't work. We can fix it, obviously. 
just going from here to here for example but uh, yeah why damage it if you can do it cleanly so you can use either um, yeah, scalpel or, or whatever you have I'll use this as usual let me see if, the, if I have the right size yeah that should be that should be good put it in slow uh, low speed because again this is very fragile point as I said that's just a via and if we manage to destroy it somehow it's game over so yeah that should be enough as you can see nice and clean by the way if you're I'll show you that tool this is uh, whatever kind of mini Dremel uh, I highly recommend that it's a lot more precise than, than scalpel or any other tool and it's very fast and uh, yeah I like it it's very nice so now we need to prepare that again prep so flux we need a nice um, nice uh, what do you call it a nice looking drop of solder here so we need to heat it up just like that so now we'll solder a wire to this point and again this will be just kind of one half of the wire because the other the other half uh, because the <laughs> we'll connect two halves of this wire with with the resistor so but let me just focus here on this one and just like that should be enough so I'll add some fresh flux not too much just a little bit and then I'll just solder it to that PLL point I don't want it to move there it's done so cleaning time now hold this in place because again this point is really really fragile so if you pull on this wire it will most likely destroy the whole via and again game over I will be securing those wires uh, for now I think with maybe cotton tape but later I'll probably use a silicone um, I don't like hot glue I have an um, electronics grade silicone which uh, works well won't damage the, the PCB or anything like that it's essentially acid free or anything free and it's very good so this is done now we need to solder the um, the resistor so let me just see how I'll put this something like this and then I'll come back here the whole way down there right here so as you can see I'm you will see if I there I'm roughly very close to, to that Microsoft logo here you see so I'm um, right here and there's a lot of like free space in here so I'll put this uh, resistor right here and then the other half of the wire will go from here to, to that point where I well, I'll, I'll show that in a minute uh, what I'll do I'll take um, I'll grab some heat shrink or whatever it is the, this, this thingy that you can put on on top of the component so that it's secure so let me let me just find it. I'll, I'll be I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I have my resistor. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of solder on both sides. It's kind of pretend. There's more solder than needed, but I just needed to kind of uh, stick to it nicely. And I put some uh, silicone uh, thing underneath uh, just to. I should should have probably put this uh, this um, resistor beforehand, but. It is what it is, so let's try and do it now.
Okay. Nice. That's done. Okay, so let's do the other side. Actually, let me put that heat shrink tube there, as you can see. It needs to be fairly long, I think, because, yeah. So, what's like this? I'll clean this part a little bit. I put this now here. What I'm doing is just cleaning flux from this kind of joint. Okay. Heat shrink tube, that size should be enough. We put it there for the moment. And we are very close to that point, let me show you. We'll be using this point here, right here. So this is the point where we'll be soldering that. So maybe let's just prep this part first and then we'll worry about the wire and the length and so on. So as usual, just a tiny bit of flux and fresh solder. There we go. Now we need that second part of the of the wire. I'll just kind of roughly see um, length that I need. So something like this will work. So probably somewhere here. Something like that should work. Okay, but first of all, we'll solder that that. Um, wire to the other side of the resistor. So, just like that, a little bit of flux, oh yeah, you don't see this, okay, Just move it around slightly. Okay. Focus. And we'll try and solder this. Just like that. Okay. Now let me clean this off. I mean flux. Take out this silicone. We'll just put it here and clean it off a little bit. I mean, there's no harm uh, with the flux being there, but let's do it properly. So now I'll put the heat shrink tube over it, just like that, and heat it up. I'm just using um, hot air, probably need a little bit more higher temperature, just it's yeah, let's add some, that should be enough now. Okay, that's all good. So, um, the other side of this wire obviously goes to, to this point right here. I don't have much room on my desk, unfortunately, so sorry about that. So this point right here. Uh, so we'll add some fresh flux. Just a tiny little bit of fresh flux. And we'll come with the wire 
just like that. Oh, sorry about that. I'm trying to focus there, just like that, and. And that's done. So we're all good, just clean it off. Okay, so I'll show you the, the kind of final product um, later. For now, I'll just leave it like, like that. Yeah, that's all good. So, uh, I'll uh, use some Captain Tate for, for now, just to keep this, especially this long wire between PLL, uh, PLL wire, um, for now, so something like that. There, and I'll obviously remove that later. And the other one is fine. Okay, so let's flip the board to the other side, and we'll connect the um, our programmer. So we solder in uh, the the programmer cable and we can then start hacking our Xbox. So let me just clean the, my desk a little bit. So again for um, for this part we'll be using probably move it a little bit higher so that you can we can see a little bit more of this even more, like that. So we'll be using these two headers. This one right here and this one right here. We'll be soldering this, this, these cables again, uh, right there, to those headers. And these are, if you buy the um, the X Flasher or the one that I'm using, programmer, they will be. There are color coded, so these colors are exactly what you can use uh, and I'll be saying you know you'll see where I solder those if you build your own pico flash then uh, just have a look at any of the tutorials and they will show you which, which cable goes to which signal so that you know what to do but for now let's start uh, preparing these headers so we'll need five points on this one so one two three four five these five points so we kind of prep those with fresh solder. And we'll also need these two points, these ones. So again, I'll prep those as well. As usual, flux. Let me move it to the side a little bit. Okay, so. are done so now the fun part we'll do that so that we'll start with uh, this side and then actually we'll start with this side I think yeah so on this side on the top we'll need brown cable and brown cable is yeah it doesn't look brown <laughs> the, I think the white balance isn't great but believe me this is brown this is brown so I'll usually attack it like this. Done. Next one will be orange. And again, 
I'm not sure how it will look like. Yeah, this looks orange. This is orange. So orange. And last one is yellow. So I've got yellow right here. Done. Now black one up top, this is ground. Just like that. Just make sure when you're soldering these, make sure you have um, good connection. Uh, because you'll have a lot of problems if you if you don't and red next one is red by the way i'll, I'll post um, some tutorial in the description with all these colors and signals so that you know what you're doing that's good enough and the last two blue right here again this is blue just hold it better done and yellow sorry green green this one's green as you can see now green right here so, that's done. We are done with soldering. We can go ahead and start programming the, the chips. Uh, so, I'll take it um, back to my desk, because again, we are done here, and we'll do the rest uh, on my desk. Okay, so, we have a console. I also put the um, new thermal paste and the fan, and the clamp, obviously. So, this is how it looks from, from the back. Um, this is where our resistor is. It's all connected right that, like that. Again, this is just temporary. I will remove this tape and put some silicone over it. And uh, yeah, so that's this side. And on this side, we have that connector connected here. So that's, that's pretty much it. So all you need to do now is plug the power in. Don't uh, push any buttons. Don't power the console on. Don't do anything like that. Just Plug the power in, and uh, as for the X flasher, you need to put it in SPI mode right here. Hopefully, you can see this. So this is in SPI. The, this um, uh, switch is in SPI mode, and you need to put this cable right here. So this is now connected. And I'll connect my PC to USB now. Let me just make sure I can reach there. So you can hopefully see this, see the, the X flasher. And let me bring the Trade Runner window. So this is a Trade Runner window, and we'll use that to for for doing everything essentially. So uh, we'll set it to glitch to RGH3, we can test if uh, if we can see the console at all. So if you click there, as you can see, it discovered that this is Trinity, in fact. So let's read NAND. This is a very important step. Um, so NAND reads two, and so it will read the NAND two times, twice, and uh, or it will read the NAND twice, and compare the nands. That's just to make sure that we've read the uh, there were no um, errors on the way. So this is very important. We need that nand. So this will take uh, a while, and I'll come back when it's done. Okay, so that's done. As you can see here, nands are the same. Make sure uh, you make a copy of that NAND uh, because that's the only way you can come back to a working console uh, if anything goes wrong. So, we've read the NAND, now we need to create uh, ZEL or ECC, that's what it was called, I think, previously. 
So let's click that. Zell image created. And now we need to write that back to the console. So let's click write. And that's done. So what you need to do now, uh, we need to, let me just get rid of this for, for the moment. We need to disconnect the X slasher from the console. So I'll disconnect it from the PC. I think that should be enough. Um, now, what I'll do, I'll uh, connect the uh, HDMI cable and I'll connect this board here so that we can power around the console. And I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, so I connected the um, HDMI, I connected Ethernet cable as well here at the back. And that's so I can grab the CPU key without actually typing it. Uh, before we power it on, let me show you this. So normally you would need to connect the, the front bezel uh, to power the, this device on. But if you look closely here, you have this uh, row of a few resistors. I'm not sure if you can actually see this, but there is a row of resistors here. So the first one, if you short with the tweezers, you short the first one, it will power on. The last one here is the eject. So that's how you can power it on. So let's plug that back in. Okay. And let's power the thing on. Let me just find this resistor here. And it's on. So let me share. We should have Zell reloaded. Yes, we do. And we need to wait a few seconds uh, for this to decode all the fuses and the, and the CPU key, most importantly. And you see this IP address 10.0.255.208. This will be different, obviously, in your network, but in my network, it is what it is. So 10.0.255.208. So we'll go back to JRunner, type that. 10.0.255.208 was, I think. Just hit enter. And there you go. So we connected. CPU key is right here. So once you have that, you can create XE build. So we just hit this button. And it will, oh, just before that, make sure you have the latest kernel version, Glitch 2 and IRGH 3. We, I said that at the beginning and it's safe as because, you know, just in case you forget. So that's done. The um, JRunner created our image and now we can write NAND. But before we do that, obviously, we have to power off the console. So again, let me hide that for a moment. So you just can do the same thing, short those two pins there. The Xbox is powered off. Now what I like to do as well, I like to disconnect the power for a few seconds. So disconnect the power completely. Plug it back in, don't power it on. I'll connect my X flasher again. So USB, just like that, it's connected. And let me now share JRunner window again. So now with all that done, again, set the glitch to and RGH3 and just right now. Now, this will take a while, um, but once we do that, our console is modded. So you'll see that I can, uh, actually, I'll have to put it back um, in the case. I'll put it back in the case, connect everything, and power it back on. Okay, so that's done. Right, was successful. We can close JRunner now. We can disconnect the 
pressure. So now actually I won't put it back in, in the in the shell. Uh, let's just try and boot it up. Let me share my output there. So again, I'll short out those pins, those, those this resistor, just like that. And let's see what happens. It should boot instantly. As you can see, instant boot, RGH3, just as RGH1.2, it's just instant boot. So this is obviously stock uh, dashboard, so you won't see anything here. But believe me, this is now modded. And uh, I'll prove that when I install a um, new hard drive. I have new hard drive, I'll uh, put some uh, stuff on it. And you'll see. So as you can see, it boots instantly, every single time with RGH3. Okay, so I'll power it off, I'll put it back on, and uh, I'll install a new drive, and I'll come back. Okay, so the Xbox is uh, more or less assembled. I just didn't put these panels here. Um, so, uh, I forgot to mention one thing. Obviously, you need to desolder this, um, these wires that we used to program the device, so to x flasher. These were desoldered. Just desolder them, and that's, that's how you're done. Uh, the other thing, the easiest way to, to check if, you're, if the Xbox is uh, modded is just press power it on with a eject button. And you should start to zell. There you go. So it starts to zell, um, it will power it off, and now start with the regular power button. It will start to my uh, Aurora dashboard. So as you can see again, instant boot, no problem there. And a few more seconds and Aurora will start. There we go. And uh, there's quite a lot of games here on this drive, so it takes a little bit. So that's it. As you can see, the Xbox is done. And again, uh, this isn't very hard to do. The um, probably the hardest part is that PLL point. Uh, but again, with a little bit of uh, practice, you can do that. Again, I highly recommend uh, modifying your Xbox if you have one. I'll put the links. Because again, this is Trinity. The what I, what you saw there here, was uh, the Trinity. Uh, on on Corona, there's different points. There's two versions of Corona, as far as I know, at least two versions. Uh, one has uh, post lines available, so you don't need anything. You just do it pretty much exact same thing as we did here. Uh, the newer versions of Corona don't have post. Um, kind of exposed on the motherboard. So we need to use post fix, post fix adapter, which again is not very hard. Uh, again, I'll post the link to, to a site where you can see everything. Very easy and lots of fun with, with Xbox 360. I highly recommend modifying yours if you have one. And yeah, enjoy. Uh, thanks for today. And uh, please like and, like and subscribe if you like my videos. And uh, we'll do something else next time. We'll probably go back to Game Boys because I have a huge backlog of Game Boys. So maybe Game Boy will be next. Thank you.